In this video, I'm going to talk about my approach to looking at artwork with people and helping them talk about it. Now, what's important here is I use exactly the same approach with all types of people, whether it be young students, older students, people that are at school, people that are outside of school, people that have got knowledge about art and experience, and people that have never seen artwork before. As long as I'm using this structure as a way into talking about the artwork, it doesn't even matter if I've seen the artwork before. If I don't know anything about the artwork, it's as valid to use this approach, even if I've seen this work hundreds of times, read about it, and maybe even spoken to the artists themselves. And that's what's key here. Most of the time you can look at an artwork with someone, the artist isn't there. They're not there to tell us what it's about. We've only got the artwork to give us clues and then we've got ourselves. And what I always ask groups for the first time I'm looking at an artwork with them is the same question. And that is, what does every artwork you ever look at have in common? Now it's a trick question, and people often have a range of different answers, all of which could be valid and interesting to talk about. But what I'm interested in is that every artwork you ever look at has got you looking at it, and you are the key to it. We can't remove our personal response to an artwork when we're thinking about it. And what's key is everyone's gonna have a different personal response. Your personal responses are based on your own experience and knowledge. So for example, when I'm looking at an artwork, I'm probably gonna see different things in it to you because maybe culturally we've grown up in different places. Maybe we're different ages and we have different childhood experiences. I've been to different places to you. Maybe an artwork reminds me of a particular thing that I used to have or place I've been, someone I know. You might not know those people, have been to those places or own that object. So we're gonna see it differently. And I'm gonna come back to that personal response a little bit later. Although it's key, there are two very straightforward ways into looking at artwork that I use as my starting point. And I pick which one of these two ways in depending on the type of artwork I'm looking at. So it's as simple as, Am I looking at an abstract artwork where I don't really recognise anything in it? Or am I looking at an artwork that's got people or landscapes in it? Basically, if it's something you can recognise, then the approach might be a bit different to start with than if it's very... If it's something you can... You want to think about what is this artwork telling us? What is the story? What is the message? What is it about? Just ask your group to tell you what they can see, what's in it. What is it about? What's happening? If there are people in it, what are the people doing? What could the people be saying to each other? Why are the people standing in those poses? What can we see in this landscape? Is there a theme? Basically, we're talking about the subject of the work. All of these very open questions about what's in the artwork can lead to a discussion especially if you're with a group and people will see different things. Some elements of the artwork might jump out or stand out to certain people where other people might notice hidden things to start with. So whenever someone's answering your questions about what's in the artwork, have a listen to see if anyone else has seen something different or has interpreted what they're looking at in a different way. Basically try to think about a narrative in it. We're trying to work out what the narrative, the story is. But if you're looking at an artwork which is unrecognisable, maybe it's a painting that's abstract or a sculpture, brilliant way into understanding what it is, is just to simply describe it. Describe the artwork itself. What is it made from? Can you describe the surface of it? Are there marks that have been made by the artist? What colours have been used? How has it been made? materials have been used? What shape is it? How big is it? What scale is it? All of these questions are very, very simple. They might even elicit one word answers. But from those one word answers, we can start to pull things together. Maybe we can start to think about why the artist has chosen to use these colours. Why the artist has decided to use that material. Why is it this big? By describing these physical elements, all of which are choices the artist has made, we can start to think about what the artist was thinking when they made it. Or we can start to think about 
how it connects to us. So back to the personal response. Now, there might be an overlap between these two ways that I've just talked about, the more describing the physical object and the more talking about what it is and the story in it, depending on the artwork you're looking at. But these open-ended questions are all really important. Then you can relate them to the personal. So when people are talking about what colours they've seen, you can ask them, why did the artist use those colours? What do they remind you of? What feeling do these colours evoke in you? When you're talking about a group of people or a landscape, you can say, what does this remind you of? Do you know this situation? Is this a place you've been? What would it be like if you were with these people, if you were in that space? So some things to think about with a personal response are, what are your first reactions to it? Actually, I normally ask that after we've had a discussion about either the materials and how it's made, etc., or about what we think is going on. Come back to your first reaction. Why does it make you feel like it makes you feel? What does it remind you of? We can get a bit more advanced. How does your age, your race, or your place of birth affect what you're seeing? And what does your reaction to this artwork tell you about yourself? Now, I've talked about this structure of my approach. Just remind you again, it's all about the personal connections and thinking about either describing the object or describing the story that's happening in the object. But let's think about ways you can actually do that with your group. Quite often, I would just do this by standing in front of the artwork with my back to it and asking people to answer my questions about describing it without me looking at it. I'm not looking at it, tell me what I'm missing. If you were describing it to someone that's not here, how would you describe it? Those sort of questions. One of the main ways I use this approach as an actual activity is by asking people to respond to my questions by writing them down on pieces of paper. And I always say, write down one word or one response on one piece of paper. And for each question I ask, just write down the first thing that comes into your head. Writing this on post-it notes is quite good or small cut up bits of paper. The idea being at the end of me asking six or seven questions, they're going to have six or seven different words on different bits of paper. So the questions might have been, what do the colours remind you of? What feelings does this evoke in you? Or what feelings or emotions do you think the artist had when they painted it? Where is this happening? What does it remind you of? Again, these questions depend on the type of artwork. Are we just describing an abstract artwork or are we describing what might be happening in the artwork? Once a group has, a, once somebody has a series of words written down, they could share their words with other people and see the different responses. Then we can have a discussion about who's right, who's wrong. Does it matter? I like to think everyone's answers are valid. But then once we've got all these words written down, we can do things with them. We could arrange them to make a poem. We could use them as a starting point for a bit of writing. Maybe we could gather just three words from your collection of words to make a little phrase that could become something that could become a title for a new artwork that responds to this artwork. Sometimes I take this into music and song by creating little phrases of the words that can be sung or chanted or even changing those words into sounds and creating a soundscape for the artwork. I'm sure as teachers, educators, people that work with groups, you might have lots of ways to expand this kind of gathering of words into an activity. But just remember, the key thing is the personal response. You can't get away from your personal connection to it. And the key thing is the artist isn't there to tell us what it's about. So it's up to you to make sense of it. And if you see something different to someone else, that is fine. In fact, when you get to degree level studying art, there are lots of different philosophical and critical ways of discussing who owns authority of the artwork. Is it the person looking at it? Is it the person that created it? That's a whole big field to be discussed in a whole different video. And one last thing we mustn't forget is when we're looking at an artwork, trying to make our own decisions about it, we can always come back to the title of the artwork if there is one. 
And I normally don't tell my group the title until we've had a chance to discuss it. And then I would read the title and see if that affects the way we've looked at it. Does it change what we think it's about? Does it reinforce what we think it's about? Sometimes in a gallery, there's a little bit of writing on the wall as well, and we can read that and compare it. But I always say, just remember that bit of writing on the wall isn't written by the artist, it's written by someone at the gallery. And it's got to be quite vague to make it accessible to anyone that's visiting the gallery. Anyway, I hope this makes sense. And I look forward to hearing about how you have all used this in your own settings. So if you leave some comments in the description below, other people can come read those comments and maybe be inspired by your ideas as well. Sharing is caring. Thank you so much.